Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. So my lab is a little bit of a mess. Today I was uh, going through some old uh, PC related stuff like motherboards and uh, yeah, video and audio cards and the likes and I uh, actually came across uh, one motherboard that uh, didn't work and uh, well it kind of works but uh, it has uh, one of those Dallas uh, real-time clock chips and of course those has a battery built in and uh, was designed to, to last for, uh, yeah, I think uh, they said like at least 10 years. <laughs> However, no, some of this stuff is uh, passing 30 and 40 years and I have one example here. Uh, the motherboard won't save its uh, BIOS settings. Uh, you can save it and if it boots again, then it retains it. But uh, whenever you turn the machine off and on again, it is lost because the battery inside the real-time chip clock is uh, totally empty and cannot be charged. This video is sponsored by PCBWay and I just want to say thanks to them for supporting my channel. As a hobbyist, I uh, often find myself in the need of some PCBs for various projects. And of course, PCBWay is my favorite uh, PCB manufacturer. Not only do they provide prototypes PCBs for reasonable prices and with uh, quite amazing shipping times, they can also provide you with other hobbyist needs like uh, advanced PCBs, PCB assembly, SMD stencil, CNC machining and 3D printing and various other products and capabilities. Also check out their shared project site where you can find a lot of ready-made designs for PCBs. So go ahead and visit pcbway.com to check out their services. Now back to the video. And here you can see the actual battery on the motherboard I'm talking about. You can see it's uh, sitting there like a chip on the motherboard. So uh, in this video, I'm going to make a modification to that Dallas real-time clock chip and we can see if we can make it work again. So this is the Dallas chip, the Dallas real-time chip and the uh, thing is it has uh, some electronics there to keep um, the time and it also has a built-in battery and it's all encased into this uh, blob of epoxy i think or plastic actually gonna order one uh, same type it's uh, 1287 slash 1187 but i found a trick you can actually modify this and uh, if you want to use a battery like this you can actually just uh, solder it in but before you do that you need to disconnect um, the battery terminals uh, that goes in to the motherboard and connect it to this. So I thought I'm gonna try to do that now. I'm first just gonna solder out the, the Dallas chip. So if you take a look at the data sheet for uh, the DS1287 real-time clock, which is the same that's in this motherboard, uh, yeah, it's just one page. There's probably some other uh, data sheet available. Uh, however, uh, here you can see the pinout. Um, it's a 24 pin uh, chip and it has uh, some address data bus over here and uh, a few pins are not connected. It has ground and VCC and uh, square wave output and uh, interrupt request output. It also has a reset input, a data strobe and a read write input. And if we take a look at the features here, it says drop in replacement for IBM AT 
computer clock calendar pin compatible with the mc 14 a totally non-volatile with over 10 years operation in the absence of power yeah so it's a self-contained subsystem with a lithium cell quartz and the support circuitry for that it counts the seconds minutes hours day of the week and date month and so forth daylight savings time option um, programmable square wave output signal bus compatible interrupt signals and here's the actual page i'm going to use uh, when i try to um, modify this real-time clock module uh, <laughs> here's some explanation about the chip how it works and uh, what you need to do to uh, modify it it's a little bit poor um, drawings here but i think i um, understood what i need to do here and the clue is that you're gonna modify it such a way that you uh, replace the built-in battery with an, uh, another battery with a coin cell battery so this is what we're gonna use so this is an old motherboard and uh, it has an uh, 486sx cpu this board is working uh, i have tested it however it does not retain its bios settings uh, for the clock and the configuration of the hard drive and uh, floppy disk drive and uh, all that stuff um, if you set the settings in the BIOS and just uh, reset the machine then it will keep the settings but if you turn it off and on again it will lose them so it's kind of uh, tedious to have to <laughs> enter the BIOS settings each time and this chip is the one that's responsible for uh, storing the BIOS settings and keeping uh, the real-time clock uh, running while the machine is off and the little uh, battery inside here I think they guarantee it uh, will last for 10 years uh, however now this motherboard is uh, a lot more than 10 years old so uh, this battery is now dead and there's no way you can uh, recharge it or anything so you can of course buy this uh, new I think you uh, at least I found a couple on uh, AliExpress and eBay if they're new or not I don't know but uh, same kind of chips and you can also uh, buy replacement modules for this chip that actually just contains uh, the electronics and also has a holder for a little coin cell battery like this but I don't want to wait for that so I just want to modify this chip so that it can be used <laughs> right now and to do that you actually need to install a battery <laughs> for it <laughs> to help it here's a closer look at the chip I just need to desolder it first and uh, then we can uh, do the little uh, modification let me just uh, start by adding a little bit of uh, flux uh, that makes it easier to desolder um, the pins to desolder a chip like this you actually need a little bit of equipment either you can use a, a little manual uh, a solder sucker like this uh, or you can use some um, solder wick like this or both in combination however i'm going to use my desoldering station which uh, makes it uh, far more easier to desolder many pins like this let's do a little bit of uh, desoldering here Not all uh, holes are populated with a pin. Yeah, that went pretty smooth. There's a couple of uh, pins that didn't clear, um, probably because there's some thick brown plane or something that uh, sucks away the heat. Uh, so the, I just janked up uh, the temperature and uh, adding a little bit extra solder there. A little bit fresh solder. Yeah, that worked. 
perfect. So now this should be uh, fairly loose. Just try to wiggle uh, the pins a little bit in case they are stuck to the sides of um, the holes. Let's see, is it loose? Yeah, okay, yeah, it's kind of loose there. Other side, yes, that's good. All right, chip is out. Yeah, as you can see, uh, not every pin is uh, populated on this chip. So uh, this pin here uh, with the mark is pin one and uh, we're gonna hook up a battery to pin 16 and 20. And as you can see, this is pin 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we're gonna hook up a battery uh, where there are no pins in fact here and here and to do that we actually need to cut into the chip if you imagine that the pins goes up further up here and then connects to the various components inside uh, the chip and uh, there's an internal battery that actually connects to some uh, metal connectors within the chip we need to make a hole to reach that connection and uh, yeah there's probably several ways you can do that you can use a drill or you can use a dremel i think i'll use uh, my small uh, dremel tool which is not a dremel it's uh, just some similar tool it's uh, this one here So I need something uh, not too uh, <laughs> dramatic here. I mean like a drill or something um, that can file away a hole. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use this uh, drill first at least. I have never done this before, so I'm not really sure uh, how to go about this the best way, but uh, yeah. And I just fixed it down to this little vice that's just lying here just to keep it um, stable. Yeah, that drill was not very uh, sharp. <laughs> so I managed to drill uh, two holes and as you can see uh, now there's something white inside the holes that looks like a metal but uh, we need a little bit the bigger space because we actually need to cut the little metal uh, traces that goes here they go up like this i think i'll use this little cutter blade uh, to make it a little bit bigger I was afraid to cut something or break something, but it seems like it went all right. So I realized I haven't uh, dig deep enough into this, so I actually grind it a little bit more. I know we can clearly see the metal. This is not metal, it's still a plastic. <laughs> so this needs a little bit more work. So now we can actually measure the voltage in this battery. Uh, it's 355 millivolts, so it should be 3 volts. <laughs> so now we can see it clearly. This is the positive terminal and this is the negative. And as you can see, here's actually two parts that are connected. This is the uh, common ground and this goes to the built-in battery and we're supposed to cut this a little um, metal wire here and then solder uh, two wires one there and one there to uh, add to the new battery because if not then you add a new battery then you will connect it to the old battery and uh, the new battery will try to charge the old battery which <laughs> might not go very well so let's see if we can cut this little uh, wire here. 
I could just use the Dremel, but it's a little bit inaccurate. You can try to use a little blade or a knife. I just use this uh, little bit here, try to cut it. Yes, I think I got it now. See that metal wire sticking up there. It's broken off and we can verify we should now uh, have zero volts. Yes, we have zero volts and we have obviously no continuity between there and there. Okay, so that's cut and the next step then is to solder in two wires. I'm just gonna snip off that little piece so it doesn't short back again later. So now it's all clean. So maybe I did a little bit too much cutting here, but um, I think this is gonna work. Hopefully we didn't uh, damage any of the other uh, <laughs> connections here. I see I bent the pins a little bit because I manhandled this chip <laughs> too much, but uh, they seems to be sturdy. Yeah, I use a little bit of flux. All right, then a little bit of soldering. Just gonna try and place uh, the wire so that it stays there by itself. Then a little solder. Can we make this work without uh, making a mess? Yeah. All right, that uh, is sturdy soldering. It's time to uh, connect the battery and I have uh, yeah, a small coin cell like this. It's uh, 2032. You could of course just try and solder it directly to the wires, but I, I think it's uh, difficult to get solder to, to stick to these batteries. Uh, instead I have uh, this holder and there's several kinds of these holders. You can buy some with already some wires on. This is for uh, for mounting onto PCBs, um, true hole. I think I can just place it on top like this and yeah this is a uh, plus so that goes there. It's almost like I could uh, I could solder uh, the pin directly there but um, yeah I'm gonna cut the wire a little bit and, and solder it to that pin and uh, the other pin is on the other side, so just route the little wire around uh, there. And then I use some glue. Yes, and that fits fine. I just had to cut a little bit away from the plastic uh, on the base here. Uh, I checked this won't interfere with um, the motherboard I'm gonna use it in. So also gonna, it's gonna be higher than the chip next to it. Also gonna insert a socket in the motherboard instead of soldering this directly to the motherboard. Just solder together those little uh, wires. Oops, now I heated up the little wire so uh, the solder melted there, I wasn't quick enough. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, flux. Okay, I think it's good. Yeah, that's solid, that's solid. Then for the other side. Yes, I think that's all right. Solid. Yeah, so it's almost like you don't need anything else. Um, yeah, but I'm still gonna have a little bit of uh, glue underneath it so that it stays in place. 
I'll just uh, squirt a little bit of uh, uh, hot glue under it. Push it down. And a little bit over here where I have solder just to protect the, yeah, the soldering. Yeah, now this one runs out of um, <laughs> glue. It's not pretty, but uh, it should work. All right, so uh, now this goes um, like this. Anyway, I'm gonna add a socket. But before I do that, I obviously need to clear those uh, holes that were <laughs> not cleared before. Yeah, all the holes are now open and the socket goes uh, into here. Obviously, if you do this uh, procedure, you need to make sure that uh, it actually fits on your board before you attempt this. I mean, if it's in between lots of other components and uh, stuff that's uh, in the way, then maybe you, you can just have the battery uh, connected with wires and uh, place it somewhere else inside the machine or on the board. Well, no wonder it's not going in. It's too big. <laughs> I need to find a smaller. Yeah, this is uh, the correct size and it's one of those sockets where you have these uh, holes, uh, round hole, holes. Uh, what's it called? Machine socket? Don't remember. Um, yeah, and the, the pins on the Dallas chip they're a little bit short so yeah i think this might be a better solution it's going that way by the way yeah just gonna solder in that socket and uh, then we're good to test i think i'm just holding the socket now from the front side just to make it flush with the board and solder one pin then i can so there um, one more and yeah if needed push it a little bit more to adjust it uh, even more yeah i think that's enough now just solder in all the rest of the pins just cleaned it and then i saw i missed one pin Always check your work. Then I can add the battery. Time to test. I have uh, hooked up uh, the board, but without um, the real time clock module. Let's see what happens then first. Yeah, we get nothing at all. Um, wonder if that's because uh, the RTC module is out or if it is because uh, yeah maybe the video card isn't properly in I'll check a little bit I moved the card to the other slot and it was the same all right let's just uh, see if we can get this uh, chip in then and see if that's the reason I mean maybe it needs it to just to run uh, but the battery holds the memory so probably because of that the pins were not straight at all. Yeah, now it boots. Nice. I took out the, the hard drive controller card and uh, yeah. Let's see now if it uh, actually stores the values. It should present an error message that the battery was not uh, found. Uh, yeah, it says memory size has changed. CMOS checks some error. Okay, let's configure this then. Now we're in the BIOS. Uh, let's set uh, the date and uh, clock. Yeah, it's actually the 31st of uh, 
January and it's uh, 24 and the time now is um, 23, 23, 15 and it's uh, 144 and it was uh, hard drive um, 49 and I just enter the parameters yeah and the boot sequence should be A and C F10 exit now let's see if it uh, stores that let's go into the BIOS um, let me actually just um, turn it off completely then turn it on control alt escape yes look at that it saved it fantastic <laughs> so that worked nice i'm kind of happy about that <laughs> it's always like that when i do projects like this oftentimes first time at least it doesn't work and then you need to <laughs> Try to figure out what's wrong and everything. Okay, I'm gonna hook up the hard drive. I know it should uh, boot straight in and should not be necessary to go into the BIOS first. Yep. Well, there's a floppy, so it's try it's trying to boot from that, but uh, yeah, I couldn't read it actually. So now it boots from the hard drive. Yes, that worked. All right, that was it for this video. I modified the Dallas real-time clock chip to continue working with an external battery. It was kind of a little bit of brute force, but uh, it worked. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something and now you know how to do this yourself. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, please hit that subscribe and the like buttons if you will. I will appreciate that. Thanks again for watching and a special thanks to my patrons. See you, bye bye.